so today is honestly one of the videos I've been the most excited to film for the entire year. I feel like I talk about it every single month and every single empties video, but it is my end of the year makeup empties. I have every single product I finished throughout this year, all my makeup, all my lip balms, I kind of combine them all into this video and we talk about them. I actually wanted to count them this year. I didn't count them last year. And this year I have a total of 59 products I finished up this year, which is wild to think about. And I even sat and counted the full size versus the minis because I expected it to be like the majority minis, but only 16 of these products were minis, samples, whatever you may have it. And 43 of these are full size products I was able to finish up. And what's even more fun about this year is since I did do it last year, I can compare all the different totals from this year to the totals I had from 2021. And I do break this up into four categories. I have face products, eye products, brow products, and lip products. And then like within each of those umbrella categories, I have each little product broken up and we'll go through all of the products. How many times can I say products? And we'll just chat about a bunch of empty makeup. So let's do this. So let's start with face. So face products I have broken into foundation, concealer, face powder, bronzers, setting sprays, primers, highlighters, and blushes. So there's a lot of different products within this category. And the first portion of this is foundations. You guys, I finished one foundation this entire year. That is not good. That is not good at all. Especially because foundation is something I wear every single time I do my makeup. How did I only finish one this year? And I'm pretty sure I had like five or six in my products I wanna finish next year video, so scary. The one product I did finish is the Fenty Ease Drop Foundation. This one I did purchase in 2021. So this wasn't even like one of my really old foundations. This is just one I was reaching for a lot. I did buy a new one of these. I had this one in the shade one. I bought the shade two when I was replacing this one. So we'll see how that shade works out. I haven't really gotten to touch it yet because I've been trying to finish other foundations where it still hasn't happened, but this is the only foundation I used up all year. Unbelievable. This foundation does retail for $32. So for the year of 2022, my foundation empties was $32. In comparison for 2021, my foundation empties were $41.31. So honestly, even though I only finished one, the actual value wasn't that different. Concealers. I kind of made an effort this year not to be buying concealers because I really wanted to like work through what I had. And I I really did accomplish that goal, I would say. The last haul I did of this year, my Black Friday haul, I did say that I bought the Milani like under eye brightener. I don't really consider it a concealer. I wouldn't be using it for concealing necessarily. I would use it for more for brightening. But yeah, I actually bought no concealers this year. Let me just see how many I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. I have nine full size and two minis. So that's 11 concealers I went through this year. So in no particular order. The first one I have here is from JCAT and this is their Stay Shorens Water Sealed Zero Smudge Concealer in the shade Buff. Didn't really love this. I bought this because I had been a big fan of the Aqua Shorens Powder Foundation at the time, which I actually don't even really love that much anymore. This one was a little bit too drying for me. I was able to like mix it with more of a hydrating concealer to use it up but it is not one that I would recommend or that I would use again. The next one here is why I bought the Milani. So this was the Elf Flawless Brightening Concealer. This again was not something I really would consider a concealer. It was more of a brightening product that I would add to like try to mask the dark circles. Right now, the only one I had other than this was the Becca Under Eye Corrector. And that's why I bought the Milani because I was trying to find something a little bit more affordable. Haven't tested it out yet, can't speak to it. This one was okay, really wasn't a favorite. Realizing I never said how much this one retails for. <laughs> The JCAT retails for $7.99. The e.l.f. retails for $6. So I don't mind this one, but I'm interested to see how I feel about the Milani because I just, I wasn't super crazy about this one. It's not one I'd buy again. The next year I have, I got in a BoxyCharm in PR and I had this in my project pan. This is the Tristique Conceal Cover and Correct Crayon in the shade Porcelain. So this was like a, like an actual like pencil. You can kind of still see a little bit in there. I really didn't enjoy this one. I never used this on my under eyes. I did not understand how people could use it on their under eyes personally. What I did was I used this one mainly for spot concealing and it did seem to work for that. But overall, I was not impressed with this product at all. This retails for $24 and I absolutely do not think it is worth $24. There wasn't even that much product in my opinion. Like I feel like it was only, it was just no. The next here I bought from Ulta. This is the L'Oreal True Match Eye Cream and a Concealer. I have this in the shade Fair. This retails for $15.99. L'Oreal can be quite pricey. You know, the True Match line is very 
nostalgic to me. I feel like one of the first foundations I found that I felt like actually matched my skin tone was in the True Match line. I know they just like reformulated the foundations. I just did not enjoy this concealer. It was very like watery almost. It was a very liquidy kind of substance. I just, I didn't really enjoy it. It was again one that I wound up either using as a mixing product or I was using it as foundation on my face. It really wasn't a concealer I enjoyed. And I had originally bought this one when I was doing like a top rated products at the drugstore video. And for $17, this is not it. Next here is from Haley's Beauty and this is their Revive Concealer. This retails for $22, pricey. I'm fairly certain about this on sale. They actually don't make this anymore. They have a newer concealer that's like in a little squeezy tube. I actually liked this one. It wasn't an all-time favorite. Can't really buy it again, so it doesn't even really matter what I think of it. But I do like the Haley's products that I've tried. It's just one of those brands where like I do have to specifically buy from their website and I don't do that very frequently. So I don't know if I would be buying from Haley's again just because I'm so infrequently buying from brand websites that I don't know if it's gonna, if it's gonna happen. <laughs> the next one here I have is from NYX and this is their Born to Glow Radiant Concealer. I had this in the shade Alabaster. This was okay. This retails for $9, although was this line discontinued the Born to Glow? I forget. The newer concealer that comes in a little pump, I am very interested in trying. I will be honest. I really, really love the Kosas Concealer. It's one of my favorites. I finished one in 2021, and I've heard people who like the Kosas like the newer NYX one, so I'm interested in trying that one. This just wasn't a favorite. I didn't hate it, but I really, really did not love this one. That is all. Next here, I have the Maybelline Age, Re Age Rewind. This one retails for $10.99. I had this in the shade Neutralizer, which was not the right shade for me at all. If you do not need a yellow undertone, do not buy this. I don't know why I bought this. Honestly, I bought it because of Tati, and I've learned me and Tati just don't have the same <laughs> makeup preferences, honestly. This is okay. This is the second one of these I've gone through. I just, I used to really like this formula. It's just not my favorite anymore. So I don't see myself buying another one of these. Okay, this one I used to really, really love. This was in, I think, my 2019 favorites. This is the First Aid Beauty Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. This retails for $22. I don't actually think they make this line anymore. This is the second one of these I've had. This was a nice concealer. It wasn't the highest coverage, but I really liked the moisturizing kind of effect it had under the eyes. It wasn't super heavy. It wasn't super cakey. So I did really enjoy this one, however, I, like I said, I don't think they even have the Hello Fab line anymore, so I wouldn't be able to get it again even if I wanted to. This is the last full size. This is the Pacifica Liquid Cover Full Coverage Concealer. I liked this one. It wasn't an all-time favorite, but I did enjoy this one. This one retails for $13. Again, I'm not sure if they still even make this one. This one might be discontinued. I haven't tried a lot of makeup products specifically from Pacifica that I love. This is probably one of the best ones I've tried, and it's not even that amazing. <laughs> It's not something I would repurchase, even if it was available. So, yeah. I mean, of all the ones I just went through, my favorite is probably the First Aid Beauty one, and they don't even make that one anymore. All right, the two minis. The first one here I have is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Illumination. This size retails for $14.50. I liked this one. I did not love it. I did not like the illuminating aspect of it under my eyes. But the coverage was really, really nice, and it wasn't super, like, drying feeling. I wound up using this for spot concealing, but I wouldn't be against trying the original under my eyes because I did actually enjoy the formula of this one. And then the last little concealer I have is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Super Concealer. I did not love this. I wound up using this for mixing purposes. This size retails for about $4.29. I was not overly impressed with this little sample, so I won't be getting it. So like I said, that was a lot of concealer. <laughs> and the total concealer empties I had for the year 2022 came out to $149.76 compared to $105 in 2021. A lot of concealer empties. I have a decent amount left. I don't think I have as many left as I've used up in this past year. So maybe in 2023 will be the year where I actually get some concealer again. The next category is setting powder. And I have four total, three full size, one mini. So let's go through the full size first. The first here I have is a broken compact. This is from Essence and it's the All About Matte Fixing Compact Powder. I think I got this in 2018. This retails for $3.99, very affordable powder. This powder, I actually really did enjoy. This was like the powder I would use in summer. I would use this one in summer, like if I was like halfway through the day and I felt like I was getting very, very sweaty, I could use this one to just like touch up and like kind of reset the makeup. I think it was really good for that. 
there wasn't really another purpose I would use this for except for like touch-ups throughout the day. However, that being said, it's not a product I feel like I need in my collection, so I'm not going to buy this again. Next here is from e.l.f. Oh, look at all the reflection of the toys in the playroom. This is their finishing powder in the shade Fair Light. I did like this powder. I did not love this powder. This is not something I would repurchase. This retails for $6. I don't even know if they still make it. It might be discontinued if I'm being completely honest, but I didn't like it enough to buy it again. And I prefer less of a powdery finishing powder these days than something so powdery, if that makes sense. The next powder I have here is my Physician's Formula Healthy Powder. I do have another one of these completely unopened still in my collection. I personally enjoy this powder. Do I think it's the best of the best these days? No, but in 2019, I really did think this was the best of the best. I like using it under my eyes. I feel like it doesn't make my under eyes look as heavy. So it's something like in the summertime, I really like because I don't like looking super heavy in the summertime versus this time of year, I'm okay wearing a little bit more makeup, looking a little bit more put together, I guess you could say. This retails for about $14.99. Like I said, they don't make it anymore. So I couldn't even recommend it if I wanted. Last, I have my little mini here. This is the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. It's a little sample I had of it. Honestly, such a good powder. I've used a full size it before. It's really good. It's really good. I'm not running out to buy it, but I do think this is a very, very nice setting powder. It looks beautiful. I really enjoy it. So for the year 2022, my setting powder empties came out to $26.90 compared to $45.74 in 2021. So last year was about double what I was able to use up this year. Bronzers. Oh my. This was the year of me finishing up bronzers. I have three full size, one mini, versus three liquid cream and one powder. Let's do liquids and creams first. I think this was the first one I used up this year. This is the Hoola Quickie Contour Stick from Benefit. I'm pretty sure that this doesn't exist anymore, if I'm correct. I don't know if they still make this. I didn't hate this. I think this is actually a decent product. I think I like this better than the powder version of Hoola. This retails for about $2 this size. And I mean, I'm not running out to buy it, but I didn't think it was bad. But again, I don't think they make it anymore. Oh, Charlotte Tilbury. This is the contour wand. I had this in the shade Fair Medium. I loved this. I was gifted this in 2020 from a subscriber. That was very kind, not necessary, but it was very, very uh, thoughtful. This retails for $40. It is so expensive. And while I really, really liked this, I've mentioned before, if I got another wand, I think I'd want to try a blush just to, just to have the opportunity to experience a different formula. But this, this was good and I used it all up. The other cream I finished is from Physicians Formula. This is their Sculpting Bronzer. I had this in the shade Toffee. This was good. This wasn't great. I didn't love the shade. They make two shades of this. This retails for $12.49. I'm not going to repurchase this. Right now, I really, really enjoy the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer, and I just, I like that formula. I think it's a lot easier to work with than something like this, which is a little stiffer and doesn't blend out, I feel like, quite as naturally. <laughs> okay, and then the powder bronzer I was able to finish up this year is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I'm glad to see that they have repackaged this because this is still completely unused in this packaging. I liked this. It retails for $15.99. I think it's overpriced for what it is. I won't be buying it again. I bought this in 2017, so I'm glad I was able to finally finish it up. All right, so the year 2022, my bronzer empties came out to $70.48 compared to only $20 last year. So I was very good with my bronzer collection usage this year. The next category is setting sprays. I did finish four this current year and all four were full sizes. So the first one was in my Project Pan at one point. This is the Iconic London Prep Set and Glow Spray. This one I think I got in BoxyCharm and PR. I liked this. I know some people said that there's like left like shimmer particles on their face. I did not have that. So I don't know why some people have that and some people don't. Product error, I don't know. It retails for $29 and I just, it's not really something I need and I'm okay with not having it again. <laughs> This one was also in a project pan. This is the Pacifica Crystal Dew Setting Spray. Again, Pacifica makeup hasn't really done it for me. I really, really like their like body fragrances, but this just wasn't it. This retails for $10. I'm not even sure they still sell this one anymore, but I just found it not that exciting and not that impressive to use, and I'm okay not having it anymore. All right, the next one, was this also, a, no, this was not in a project pan. This one was not, okay. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist. This retails for $8. I actually really enjoyed this. I loved the smell. I loved the sprayer. I loved a lot about this. However, I've been told 
they repackage this and the new packaging is not as good. So while I actually did really enjoy this one, it's not one I will be buying again. The last one here I have is from MacBisk Plus and this wasn't a project pan. This retails for $31. I do have a like half size Mac Fix Plus. I really like Mac Fix Plus. It's one of those things where it's like really expensive, but I really do think it's very good at what it does. So I would get it again, but I already have like a backup of it. So I don't need to right now. So for the year 2022, my setting spray empties came out to $78 compared to $50 in 2021. Primers. I have quite a lot of primers. Primers were my biggest category in 2021. I think concealers were that for me this year. So let's see what I have here. Three full size and five minis. Let's do full size first. But my first one is really, really a favorite of mine. The Essence Fresh and Fit Awake Primer. This one is a good dupe for the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. However, I'm pretty sure they discontinued this. So whoop de doo This retails for $4.99. I really, really, really enjoy this, but I can't get it again. But if I could, I would. Speaking of Becca, RIP. This retailed for $38. One of my all-time favorite primers. I can find primers that are glowy, but I haven't found a primer that matches the like formula consistency of this. I loved the formula actual, like the way it said on my face. So I'm very sad. This one I got in PR from BoxyCharm, the Professional Hydrate Primer. I liked this. I didn't love it. It's not something I felt like I was like very upset to be done with. I was kind of satisfied that I was able to get through it. This retails for $32, so it's quite pricey in my opinion for a primer. I no, they have newer versions of the professional. I'm not against trying them, but you know, $32, it's a lot of money. Now onto the minis. I have another Becca here. This is the first light priming filter. I have a couple samples of this. This size retailed for $14. I like first light, but I love backlight. First light is like a purple kind of brightening versus the backlight has just like this really pretty glow. So this one's fine, but I never actually bought these, this primer because I preferred the other one so much. From Physicians Formula, I have their Spotlight Primer. I think this was supposed to be a dupe for the Becca. I liked it. I don't love it. This mini retails for about $4.62. I think it's okay, but not one I'm gonna buy it again. I have two from First Aid Beauty. This is again from the Hello Fab line. This is the Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. This retails for about $4.89. I like this one. Actually, this isn't one I think I'd go out and buy full price, but on sale, I might. I just really need moisture on my skin these days with how cold it is outside. So I'm not against getting this again. I have gone through a few samples of this before and I do really like it. This one, not a big fan of. The Pores Be Gone Matte Primer. I'm not much of a matte primer fan. This one retails for about $4.62 and I'm glad to be done with it. I can't really say much more than that. The last primer here is this little sample of the Estee Lauder Futurist Aqua Brilliance Watery Glow Primer. This one was very watery. I did not find it glowy. The only glow was like if you splash water in your face and like you look glowy because there's literal water on your face. Other than that, no glow. So for the year 2022, my primer empties came out to $110.24 compared to $117.63 last year. So very, very close. I do have two highlighters to share today. The first is from The Balm and it's a little sample of the Balm from the Balm Voyage Volume 2 palette in the shade Google Carabisha. I actually have gone through one of these little samples before. It was the, the first highlighter I ever owned. This size retails for about $2. I really did like this highlighter, but I'm very, very glad to say it's gone. This I got for free from e.l.f. This was this retails for about $3 and it is their Pink Pearl Glow Stick Highlighter. This was in a project pan for over a year before I was able to finish it up. I'm just, I'm glad to be done with it. You know, it got to the point at the end where I was like, I'm so close. It was so frustrating how long it took to finish at the end, but. I'm looking forward to moving on to something else. So for the year 2022, my highlighter empties came out to $5 compared to $0 in 2021. So $5 more than the year before. Then I did finish one full size cream blush this year. And this is the Ilia Multi Stick in the shade Dreamer. I got this in a Sephora Favorites gift set in 2021. Loved this color. Loved this formula. So easy to just like scribble on my cheeks. It is expensive though, $34 for this. I would get it on sale. I liked the formula enough to get it on sale. I don't know if I would buy Dreamer again or if I wanna, wanna try something new. I really did like this shade though. So for 2022, my blush empties came out to $34 compared to $0 in 2021. So one more blush than last year. So those were all the products in my face category. So the total in my face category this year came out to 500 
$6.38 compared to $371.76 last year. So that is quite a lot more. I was able to finish this current year in my face category. Okay, I just took a cookie break and I'm back. The next category is eyes. All I have in this category is both mascara and eyeliner. And let's start with mascaras. I have four full size and two minis to talk about in no particular order. Let's start with Sky High. Sky High I talk about a lot. This is their shade Black is Black. I actually have the brown shade right now. I love Sky High. I'm on my third tube of it right now, I'm pretty sure. Oh God, it's like really dried out. <laughs> this is what the wand of Sky High looks like. It's just a rubber bristle wand. That seems to be what my preference is based on <laughs> the type I like. Sky High retails for $12.99. You can typically get Maybelline on sale though. It takes a lot for me to say I like a drugstore mascara. I'm very, very picky. Mascara is the category I'm probably the most picky in of all categories because I hate transfer, smudging, all of it can stay away from me. This is going to be my favorite of everything we talk about today by default. The next one here I have is from CoverGirl. It's their Flourish Lash Blast. I had this in the shade, very black. I also really like this one. This retails for $10.99. I don't actually think I bought this. I must have gotten this as a free sample from Ulta, but it's that same kind of rub rubbery bristle. I'm not running out to buy the Flourish again, but I do really enjoy it. I do think it's a good mascara. It's a little bit less pack and a punch, I feel like, than the Sky High, in my opinion. I have theories about this. This is the e.l.f. Keep Your Curl Mascara. This retailed for $4. They discontinued this. I think they discontinued this one to make the one that they have now that's the roller lash dupe. I would be interested to know if it's the exact same formula just in like new packaging to make it more marketable because I did really like this one, but they don't make it anymore. My suspicion. I mean, look at that. That literally, the, the reason I liked this to begin with was because it reminded me of roller lash. That's my conspiracy theory for you guys. So keep your curl no longer exists, but I think it's the same as the new roller lash. Not that I've tried it or lash roll, whatever they're calling it, the new mascara. Next one here, I didn't even realize I finished this one this year. This is the Wander Beauty Mile High Club Mascara. This is actually not a rubber wand. This is more of a very small bristle wand. I'm not sure if this is considered a tubing mascara. I'm not 100% sure, but this is either the second or third one of these I've gone through. I just chose to get one in my new Ipsy Glam Bag Plus for December. So I do like this one. I've used it a bunch. It's probably one of the very few mascaras I like that have a natural bristle and not the rubber bristle. So there's that. Okay, I have two minis here and I actually hate both of them. So this is only half of a mascara. It's a sample. I didn't say how much the Wonder Beauty. Wonder Beauty is 26. So out of all those, it's the most expensive. So it's the one I would least likely be buying because of that. Okay, Huda Beauty. This is half of one of her like double-sided mascaras. So I said this is probably worth about a dollar, but this is the volume side. I just, both of these mascaras were so bad. It, it flaked, it was a mess. In comparison, I bought her top coat this year that like will help make regular mascara waterproof. And I do enjoy that, but these, like this double-sided mascara, I did not like. It was such a mess and I hated it. Okay, this is from Kosas and this is their the Big Clean Mascara. This is the version before they reformulated. I hated this because of how much it flaked and smudged and I thought it was terrible. This one retails for $13. They have since reformulated. However, I have not seen anyone say the reformulation is that much better. But this made my lashes look wonderful. Like. It's a natural bristle one, but it's curved, but it was such a mess. And like, if it's gonna be a mess, I don't understand the point of it. Are there people out there that don't mind when their mascara like smudges and gets everywhere? Because that's the only way I can imagine this getting and approved in testing because I don't understand otherwise. Okay, so those were my mascara empties. So for the year 2022, my mascara empties came out to $66.98 compared to $72.49 in 2021. So pretty close in comparison. Eyeliners, I have three in front of me, one liquid, two pencils. Let's do the pencils. These were actually both sample size minis when I got them. So this first one here I have is from Urban Decay and this is the shade Perversion. It's all dried up and teeny tiny right now. This retails for $11.49. I really like the Urban Decay pencils. I don't hate them. I'm on the hunt for the perfect pencil liner. Right now I'm really liking the one from Julep. It is not transferring and that's, that's all I want. I just want it to be creamy. Like I want it to glide on easily and not smudge. That's all. This one was from Smashbox and this is their always on gel liner in the shade Fishnet. There's really not much left. It, it's like all dried up. It's, it's not good anymore. <laughs> so Urban Decay was a free sample from Ulta. This one I think came in an Ipsy Glam Bag. This one retails for $11.50. So they're basically the same price. I liked the Urban Decay better. The Smashbox was okay. I'm not like running out the brief purchase either personally. I'm realizing I definitely read that wrong. The Urban Decay was 11, not 11.49. This was the 11.49 
eyeliner. Anyway, they're all very close in price. This is from Physicians Formula. This is their eye booster in the waterproof version. I love this one. This is, I think this is the second empty I have. I have one open. Lately, I've been really loving the NYX Epic Ink. However, I think this and the Epic Ink are very, very similar. Like, I don't think you need both. I think you're good with one or the other. I think they're extremely similar formulas, extremely just like very similar. I just say, if you don't really care, I would just get whichever ones on sale are the cheapest. That's just how I feel. <laughs> so for the year 2022, my eyeliner empties came out to $33.99 compared to $99.49 last year. You can watch the last year's video if you're interested. So for the year 2022, my eye product empties came out to $100.97 compared to $171.98 last year. Okay, so the next category is brows. I have this broken into pencils and gels. So for pencils, I finished five this year. In no particular order, the first here I have is the Milani Stay Put Brow Pencil. I hated this one. This is probably the worst that I'm gonna talk about right now. So it was, let's see if that's gonna even focus. Focus. It was like an oval shape. It's not gonna focus because it's so tiny. It's like a little oval shape, but it was like so glidey and it was a mess and it did not last. Like it's called stay put and it does not stay put. It is quite the opposite of staying put. Way too creamy, way too glidey. Do not recommend. This retails for $9.99. Just no, don't do it. This one is one of my favorites, the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim. They've repackaged it. I don't know if they call it the Ultra Slim anymore, but it still does exist. It's just newly packaged. This retails for $8.99. You can get them on sale. I definitely have at least one more of these in my collection. I do like this. Like I said, Maybelline you can get on sale. Usually buy one, get one half off if they're not just having like a full sale anyway. So I do actually recommend this one. I really like it. Although I would get a different color next time. I have this in deep brown. I think I would wanna try a different shade. I think this one's a little bit lighter than I prefer. This one here from e.l.f. is their brow pencil in the shade taupe. I actually have this in a different shade like a darker brown shade and I like the darker brown better. This retails for $3 and for $3, it's honestly the best deal you're gonna get. I mean, I prefer this one over their slimmer brow pencil. I think this has a better formula. I wish, oh, it's not gonna focus on this either. I wish the tip was a little bit smaller, but overall it's a really good formula. This one here is from Soap and Glory. This is their archery brow pencil. I had this in the shade dark brown. Really, really like this. This was a nice, very small precision tip brow pencil. This one retails for $9.99. However, I think this one's discontinued. I don't really know if the Soap and Glory makeup line still really exists anymore, but I have tried really, really good makeup from them. I actually like their makeup products more than other products I've tried from them. So it's sad to see that maybe it's not existing anymore. The last brow pencil I have here is from Morphe and I had this in the shade Latte. I didn't hate it, but I just, I don't buy from Morphe anymore. This retails for $8. It was okay, but I didn't think it was like so mind blowing that I need to go back to buying from Morphe. Like I'm good. There are plenty of other brow pencils out there. I'm wearing the NYX one right now and I really love it. So for the year 2022, my brow pencil empties came out to $39.97 compared to $138.98 last year. Yes, $100 difference, wild. And then I did only finish one brow gel this year and honestly, I miss it. It's the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. I got this in 2018 and wasn't really impressed with it back then. But honestly, I've been using the ABH clear brow gel and it is not as good as this, which I don't remember that at all. I don't know if I have a dud ABH brow gel, but like this one was holds so much better. This retails for $24 and honestly, the way I feel right now, I would get this over the ABH next time. So for the year 2022, my brow gel empties came out to $24 compared to $19 last year. And for the entire brow category, my empties came out to $63.97 compared to $157.98 last year. Last category I have here are lips. So the categories I have are lip glosses, lip balms, lip pencils, and liquid lipsticks. Starting with lip glosses, I only finished one this year. It's technically a lip oil. It's the only full size like lip oil, lip gloss I've finished maybe ever. Not 100% positive. This is from INN Beauty Project and this is their lip glaze in the shade number one. $17. Smells like apples, so good. This was in my project pan forever. It made me really not want to work on panning full-size lip products for sure. I really did like this, but I feel like if I got it again, I'd want a different shade. That's the only gripe I have. I did get this in an Ipsy Glam Bag Plus, I feel like originally. So for the year 2022, my lip gloss empties came out to seven, oh, Luigi's here. $17 compared to $7.92 last year. Next category is lip balms. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think one might be a, not full size, in no particular order. The first one here I have is from Kosas, and this is their Kosas Sport Lip Balm and Baseline. So this is just the clear shade of this. I got this in like a little kit, B 
the end of 2020 and it had this and the lip jelly lip oil their lip oil in it i really like both products i actually got a tinted shade of this in the same kit that the ilia lip balm came in i do prefer the clear over the tinted but this is 18 dollars, and i actually really do like it i would not pay 18 dollars for it the next one here i actually got in pr in 2020 as well it was the blueberry hydrating honey lip balm first of all does this packaging look familiar because i'm pretty sure this is the same packaging that ColourPop used in their winnie the pooh collection this year so i'm fairly certain they did not create that packaging because i got this in 2020 it's just different colors it smelled so good it literally smelled like blueberries and honey however i did not like the formula of this i did not feel like it actually hydrated my lips i would use this before bed and it was okay but not something I'd really recommend. Next one here I have is from Dr. Lip, and this is their Sweet Potato Pigment Balm. This one is the one that's not a full size. I've used their original, the Dr. Lip original, and it was better than this. I did not like this Sweet Potato one. I really don't recommend it. I forgot to say prices. This one retails for $8. This one retails for $6.99. That's too much for this little product. Don't recommend. This one here from Catrice is their Clean ID highly caring lip balm this is my second lip balm i've used up from catrice this one retails for six dollars they have very basic lip balm formulas like they're not over the moon they're not incredible they're just like completely average i would say they're completely average they are not worth going to the catrice website to buy from they were good for like adding to the end of an old order so I'm not getting anymore. <laughs> this one Scott put in my 2020 advent calendar. The Vaseline Lip Therapy Rosy Lips Lip Balm. This retails for $3.49. I liked this, however, I would rather have the clear. This color, I did not like the color, and I was using this at night for like a, a lip mask, and it worked so well as a lip mask, but the pigment would get all over my pillow. So I feel like the clear version of this for nighttime would be fantastic the last lip balm i have here I must have gotten this in a lip favorite kit this is the nars afterglow lip balm in the shade orgasm i didn't hate this product but i hated orgasm the color this retails for 28 dollars, and the color orgasm first of all i think is a very overrated color but the color on the lips was just way too pink for me what I would do is I would have to like put this on before I was like doing my makeup and then I'd wipe it off and put my lip color on. Like I couldn't wear this by itself. It was not cute at all. Don't recommend. So for the year 2021, my lip balm empties came out to $70.48 compared to $42.99 last year. Lip liners. I did finish one this year, which was very exciting. I had this in a project pan. This was the Wet n Wild Gel Lip Liner in the shade Bear to Comment. I really did like this shade. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that at all. A little bit in there. My only thing was it was very like creamy so it wasn't a very long lasting lip liner but it was a really pretty color i felt like it glided on very easily but it wasn't like a long wearing lip liner is all and that retails for 2.99 so for the year 2022 my lip liner empties came out to two dollars and 99 cents compared to zero dollars last year all right this is the actual last product in this video we finally made it and is from the bomb it is the meet matt hughes long lasting liquid lipstick in the shade patient I tried to pan this for so long. I cannot believe how long it took me to pan this teeny tiny liquid lipstick. This retails for $2.72. I got this at Ipsy Creator Day in 2019 in like a kit that they were giving out to the creators. This is a very drying formula. I always had to either put a lip balm under it or a lip gloss over it. I liked the color, but I didn't like the formula. So for the year 2022, my liquid lipstick empties came out to $2.72 compared to $0 last year. So for the year 2022, my entire lip empties total came up to $55.70 compared to $50.91 in 2021. So the big grand finale of totals, and we can wrap this up. For the year 2022, my total makeup empties came out to $756.02 compared to $760.37 in 2020. 21, meaning the difference between the two years was only $4.35. What are the odds? That is so close, not even close to being intentional. So we have been here forever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been looking forward to filming it all year. Let me know, what was your most exciting makeup empty of the year? Mine was probably being able to finish the butter bronzer. That I feel like was something I didn't really see coming. And once I put my goal to it, I was able to finish it. And yeah, that is it for this video. As usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Instagram down below. Give it a follow and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.